Hey guys, it's Alex, and uh, today we're going to go over two ways how to do ambient occlusion in Maya. And what ambient occlusion does is it creates smooth shadows underneath your object, and it looks really nice, nice and realistic. So there's two ways to do this. Uh, the first way, and we're going to open up Maya here, and uh, create a plane, a cube, Let's go to shaded mode here. Drag the cube up on top of the plane. So what we're going to do is select all objects. And right in the render tab here in your channel box, you want to click uh, this button with the blue ball on it. Select layer 1 that was created. And if it'll... There we go. go right, hold the right mouse button on that. Go presets, occlusion and we're going to do a quick render here one thing you want to know note about uh, ambient occlusion it does increase your render time by quite a bit and I'll show you the difference in a second we're going to wait for this to finish rendering see look 23 seconds but it does look good it looks nice realistic nice shadows tops a little bright right now so we can uh, fiddle with those settings in a minute but uh, 23 seconds for that or if we went to master layer and we rendered what a regular would be it takes one second it's an instant render but it looks like shit so we're gonna go back to here and uh, Oops, didn't mean to open that. Quick render again. Alright, let's just cancel that. You've seen it. Nice smooth shadows here, but uh, you might notice that there's little dots everywhere. I'm not sure if you can see it on my screen, but if you are following this yourself, you might see there's a bunch of little dots and the shadows not all that smooth so we can change this by going to the attribute editor and select surface shader 1 and under out color hit this button and we're going to increase the samples to let's say 32 no 64 we're going to keep with uh, exponents of 2 And uh, the higher samples you have, the longer it'll take to render, but it does create a smoother sh shadow. So it does look nicer in the long run. Twenty-four seconds for that render time. I don't think that was all that long, uh, all that much longer. If I can remember the last one, I think it was 24 seconds, so it's not all that much of a difference. So now we're going to, uh, I'll show you the other way. This, the way I just did now, using this, I think it only works up to Maya 8.5 or Maya 2009. This uh, next way I'm going to show you, let's create a new scene, works up to uh, Maya 2011 and higher, I guess. So we're going to create a cube again. Create a cube or a plane in a cube. Sorry, scale up that cube. Bring it on the top of the plane. Let's make it a bit smaller. And uh, what you're going to do is go to Windows uh, Rendering Editor Hypershade. Wait for that to load up. And we're going to create a material and see if I can find it create Maya nodes Sh surface shader we're gonna middle mouse drag that into the work area and what you're gonna do is middle mouse drag that onto the cube and the plane and we're gonna go create Maya nodes again hold down the left mouse button and let go on top of create Maya mental ray nodes and we're going to go down to uh, see if I can find it textures there it is under the textures tab so we're going to middle mouse drag that into there 
And now what you want to do is middle mouse button, drag that on top of surface shader, click other. We're going to select out value here and we're going to select out color there and hit close. And now when we render, I think this sh nope, one more thing. We're going to go view, select camera, we're going to go to the attribute editor and we're going to go to environment drag this slider all the way to the right to change the background color to white and we need to be in mental ray I think render there we go what is it done? okay so we definitely need to increase the samples you can probably see now it's all pixelated and the shadows look like crap so we're going to select the cube again surface shader out color click this input box and we're going to go to 128 ish and we'll see a difference yeah it's a lot smoother it's still a little bit pixelated so we could uh, maybe go 256 That's looking better. And what we can also do is go to the render settings and click in that button there. Go to the mental ray tab. We're going to go to production quality and click final gathering. Final gathering pretty much doubles your render time but makes it look twice as good so I'm going to pause the video for now and I'll show you with this picture when it's done. Alright, the picture's finished rendering. It looks pretty much like the last one we did using the uh, render tab in the uh, command bo in the channel box. And uh, what one one more thing we want to change is the top of this is really really bright. It's too bright to see the edge of the cube. So we're going to go back to the attribute editor, click this, this again, and we're going to decrease the brightness just a little bit, and maybe a bit more. And you should be able to see the outline of it against the white background. Now, This is as far as I'm going to go with this tutorial. Uh, you can see that ambient occlusion it's really nice realistic shadows and I use it for almost all of my renders but I don't want to take 49 seconds per frame the uh, ambient occlusion definitely does increase your render time compared to uh, just a simple cube without any shadows or anything so um, you want to find a balance between nice shadows and uh, low render time for your projects depending on your time frame for your project so uh, thank you for watching guys uh, I'll be creating more tutorials in the future on other things if you want, have a suggestion for another tutorial you'd like to see leave a comment and uh, I'll see you guys later thanks for watching